today I'm going to talk about the thinker or the figuring it out part or the highly cognitive system and this can drive therapists crazy uh, and if it drives you crazy that's a part of you getting triggered of course uh, which you can attend to uh, so it will make it very difficult for you to be able to help that part to unblend in the client and the presentation will look something like this you uh, you've established the target part so the, tar the client might say um, you know, I notice uh, sometimes I'm not as confident as I want to be. Like, okay. Okay, so there's a part that's concerned about that, about you not being as confident. Yeah, okay. Um, so uh, would it be okay to get to know the part that doesn't feel confident? Or is it the part that's talking about the part that doesn't feel confident and wants the attention? Where are we going to go? Uh, no, it would be okay to talk about the one that doesn't feel confident. Okay. Okay, good. So the one that doesn't feel confident, where do you notice it in or around your body? Or when did it come up most recently? Or um, does it present as a voice? Does it present as a feeling? What do you notice about it? So however a part presents is fine, of course. And there are many different ways the parts can present in different systems. Oh, well, I'm remembering last time I became aware of not being as confident. And it was when my boss said, you know, we should do X. And I really, really thought we should do Y. Y would be a much better plan, but I didn't say it. Oh, okay. So that sounds like this part. Great. So come back to that moment when you were noticing that. And notice how you feel towards this part. Where do you notice it? Is, is it does it have a location in or around your body? Yeah, I kind of feel it in my chest. Great. So uh, how do you feel towards it? Well, uh, I think it gets really intimidating. So what we just heard in response to how do you feel towards was I think. Right? And so the session might go on. Um, okay, so that sounds like a thinking part. Would it be okay if your thinking part pulled back a bit so that, uh, that you could connect with that part? Um, I think so, yeah. Okay, it sounds like it might still be the thinking part. Uh, are you aware of this thinking part? Um, well, I mean, of course, how can you not think. Okay. So what we've got here very clearly is a blended thinking part. Uh, we've asked a little soften and back, it's responded from its thinking place. So what we want to do is get this thinking part on board. It's a manager. Um, it's an extraordinarily helpful manager, they all are. Um, so what we want to do when we've got a blended manager is really ensure that it is respected and loved and appreciated. Now, ideally, from the client's self, because then there'll be some discernment, some awareness that self exists, separate from the thinking part. So here is how I would work, how I do work with thinking or figuring it out parts. Um, wow, sounds like this part of you really loves to think, or it sounds like you really love to think, is that right? Well, I don't know if I love to, but, but I do it a lot. Oh, okay, so my, my mistake, sorry, it sound, I was sounding a bit too enthusiastic, I think, there. I'll tell you why I have a thinking part and it loves to think and it's really good. And my guess is that you wouldn't be here today without your thinking part. Is that fair to say? Well, yeah. Okay, so um, how has it helped you? How has it helped you to get here? Well, uh, you know, I did really well at university and uh, also, you know, when I was a kid, I was really good at figuring stuff out. You know, or, you know, I'm a mechanic and I would pull things apart when I was little and then figure out how they went back together again. Or whatever number of scenarios that the thinking part wants to be recognized for. It's great. Okay, so it sounds like this part goes back a long time, right? When, uh, when do you have a sense of it first of taking its place and uh, uh, taking this role, being such a good thinker? Oh, I don't know, a long time ago when I was a kid. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense, yeah. Now, I'll sometimes offer this because it's true from my story. If there's something true from your story, offer it because it can be helpful in building a rapport. So I'll often say, you know, I remember when my kid was little, when she was two, she had one of those spigots, like a little um, uh, circular toy, and you had to put different colored donuts on, and they were different sizes, and if you got them right, you had them in the spectrum. It was a little rainbow toy. Familiar with that? Yeah, great, okay. So I remember, when she did that one time and she got them all in the right order, I beamed at her and I said, hey, 
You figured it out. Look at that. That's great. And I realized many years later, that's me uh, rewarding and celebrating uh, her figuring it out part. So her figuring it out part felt great, as it should. It's a great part. Anything like that ever happened to you, a lot of the clients? Oh, well, you know, I remember when I was doing blah, 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 right? Great. So now we've got the client beginning to celebrate and appreciate and feel warmly towards the thinking part. And then further interventions can look like this. Um, does it know you're there? Do you have a sense of it now? Can you share that appreciation you feel for it with it directly? Is that available to you? Does that feel possible? Um, as you do that, do you get a sense of how it's responding? So that's one way to go. Another way to go is um, your thinking part's really, really strong and you're figuring it out part's really, really strong. And it sounds like they've been trying to figure out a whole bunch of stuff and think their way through problems, which is partly why you're coming to see me. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Okay, so here's the thing. Here's the thing about this work. The other parts of you that are holding whatever the stress or information that they want you to know about, they don't want to be thought about. They don't want to be figured out. They simply want to be heard. And that's actually not the job of a thinking part. The thinking part is about thinking and figuring stuff out. But that is your job. If your thinking part would be willing to just pull its energy back just a little bit, then uh, what would be really helpful is if it were to come back towards the end of the session and help figure out how the other information you're getting from different parts fits into your story. That may not make much sense right now, but if you hang in there uh, and the thinking part allows you to hear from some of the other parts, things will begin to make sense in a different way for it. And it's really good at piecing together those stories. How does that sound? And the final intervention with the thinking part, which can be helpful, is if, if the part's fully blended and the clients say, you know, I really don't know what you're talking about. You know, I think all the time. How can you get through the day without thinking? You might want to ask, uh, okay, I hear that. Um, are you thinking in the same way all of the time? Um, are you thinking when you're at the gym? Uh, are you thinking in the same way when you're riding a your bicycle? Uh, are you thinking in the same way when you're having sex? Uh, are you thinking in the same way just before you go to sleep? Now you might get a yes. You might have a really fully blended thinking part, in which case there's probably some trauma, something in the background that's made it not safe to be in the body, have to stay in the head, in which case you're going to take longer in working with this part, and you're going to be working with it for a while. So you might be doing direct access for a while. Direct access is either implicit or explicit. If it's implicit, you're talking to the part, you know it's a part, uh, but you don't talk to it as a part. So you say, um, so uh, what do you think this is about? And uh, yeah, yeah, okay. So, um, so when you hear that, what does it make you think? Right? So I'm talking directly to the thinking part that's fully blended. I know it's a part. I'm going to keep doing this until it feels like there's some um, trust in me, that the thinking part feels respected, and then at some point I might say a bit further down the road. Um, so this thinking part of you, it's so strong, the one that I've been talking with the whole time. Did you notice that? Um, explicit direct access is when I'm talking to the part as a part. So I'll say, can I speak to that thinking part? Is it okay if I do that? And then see if you get permission to do that. And then I'll, I might say, wow, you're amazing. You're the thinking part of John. Uh, you've been doing this for so long. You know, how do you feel about your success in terms of resolving all the problems? And it's one of the things about working with managers. They will confess to failure. If they know that you appreciate them and you're on their side, they will say, well, you know, that's why we ended up here, because I couldn't sort it all out. Then there's a way in. Well, how would it be if we tried something different? I don't think it's going to work, all this talking to parts stuff. Yeah, I'm, I'm not asking you to buy into it. I'm just asking if you can give permission to see what happens. Whatever the dialogue is with the um, explicit thinking part, if I get a yes, or if I get a no, or even if I get, uh, you know, uh, I don't want to be doing this anymore. I'll say, okay, that's fine. That's great. Thank you. I really appreciate being able to speak to you. Is it okay if I speak to John now? So I'm very clearly transitioning from speaking to the part to speaking to John. And anytime we're talking to a client, we are talking to them as their self. So 
but you never need to say, can I speak to John's self now? Or how does self feel about that? Again, beginning therapists can make that mistake. The client is self. That's the assumption that we're starting to work with. If they're blended, we help them to unblend, but we know that they are self behind that blended part. Once the thinking part is on board, once it knows that it's a great ally in the system, it can work with self. And then it's very, very helpful. One way it can do that is, if, for example, you've got a client who's listening in and they're aware of a six-year-old part who's in her bedroom and she's scared. Right? So, you know, does that part know you're there? Yes. Okay. How come it's so scared? The client says, I think it's because she's worried about her sibling. I say, okay, that sounds like a thinking part. It could well be right. Uh, how about if the thinking part pulls back for a moment and we can ask the six-year-old what it is that she's worried about? And then self will come to the six-year-old and ask, you know, is, are you worried about your sibling? Oh, no, it's not that. She's saying she's worried about something else. Okay, good to know. So we're hypothesis testing. The uh, thinking part has an idea. Fine, thank you. Let's see. If you're right, that's great. That'll take us down a certain path. If you're not right, we'll just ask and get the information that's more accurate. And, of course, the thinking part then, once information has come from the exile, which may not have been known, um, to the client's system. It might have been buried, exiled. Um, then the thinking part can join the dots. So that how that fits in my life. That's how that makes sense. Oh, I hadn't realized that's why I always do X. So uh, very helpful to get the thinking parts on board once they know that we're not trying to fire them. and <laughs> We're not uh, trying to get them to do anything other than work in a slightly different way now because they're an ally in the system instead of having to take the lead. That can be a relief for them too. They're often... Uh, Often tired. <laughs>